For me, this is a time when we only have Indian food, but with a very modern Indian twist to it. In today's cooking, I'm going to be creating another starry wonder that's perfect for the weather and the climate that Diwali brings. My methi murg or fenugreek chicken has the warm, comforting spices. When you pair this along with another starry wonder, that's the lotus root crisp, it's a match made in heaven and a perfect meal to enjoy either for lunch or dinner. Let's get to creating both of these starry creations today. Kickstarting off this methi murg, it's really simple and as it cooks, we get to baking our lotus roots. So to start off, I'm just going to take about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of olive oil and I'm just going to allow it to get nice and hot before we start adding our warm comforting spices to it. In goes one bay leaf that I've just cut roughly, about a two inch piece of cinnamon, two black cardamoms, four green cardamoms and four cloves just to scent the entire olive oil. As you get the real welcoming scents of the spices. In go two red onions finely chopped and we're just going to allow this to saute and get to slight translucence by it cooking on the slowest possible simmer. Just saute this and as you see it sizzling away. Here I've taken four whole green chilies because this is the only thing that's going to give me the heat. Slit they go in as well and we're just going to allow all this to saute and scent the entire creation. As the onions have got soft and translucent, in goes a tablespoon of ginger garlic paste. I'm just using a store-bought variant out here. The saffrony yellow color comes together with some turmeric. So in goes about half a teaspoon of turmeric and we are just going to swiftly allow this to mix and stain the gorgeous onions but not burn. So as this has sauteed, now is the time to add in your chicken. So here I've taken a kg of chicken thighs because that's the preferred meat that the family enjoys. And I'm just going to allow this to cook with the onions, the chili, the warm spices and the turmeric. Allowing the chicken to sear for about two minutes on one side, we're just going to turn it. We do not want it to brown, but we want it to cook very slowly yet absorbing all the flavor of the chili and scenting the meat. So just turn these. As the chicken has seared for another four minutes on the other side, in goes three tomatoes that I've de-seeded and just cut into small dices. And with that, I'm adding some yogurt. So here I'm using Greek yogurt, about 400 ml. I'm just going to use this thick, gorgeous and luscious creation in. Allow all this to mix with each other and you just simmer this and close it. Cook it covered for at least 15 minutes. A great food hack out here is if you add Greek yogurt to this entire creation, you get restaurant style methi murg without it having any nut or nut cream going into it. So just allow all this to mix with each other and we're going to season it with some iodized salt. So about a teaspoon. You can go right ahead and use a flavored salt if you want, but I prefer just going ahead and using some iodized salt into this. Mix this well. It doesn't require additional fanfare or drama. And it's time to cover this and cook it for 20 minutes on the slowest possible simmer. Now I've been really fortunate to get my hand on some lotus root and the moment I saw it in the market, I had to, had to pick it up because one creation that comes together and it's the perfect snack to enjoy. You can also store it in a airtight container and enjoy it all through the week. So here I've got about a kg of lotus root that I've peeled and cut it diagonally about one quarter of a centimeter thick and we are just put it into a bowl. You have to be a little careful not to allow too much of air to come in contact with it because it turns brown. But as we are baking it, it doesn't really matter. 
To this, I'm going to add some Himalayan pink salt. So go right ahead and be as liberal as possible because the Himalayan pink salt out here really takes this creation to the next level. So about a gram and a half to two going right in. Into that, I'm going to add a teaspoon of black beautiful pepper powder. So that goes in and we're just going to allow it to toss along with some fennel powder. So about a teaspoon of fennel powder going in as well. And now you want that spice and heat and that comes from the great red beautiful Kashmiri chili powder. So about two and a half to three teaspoons of Kashmiri chili powder going on top. And you're just going to get to tossing it before adding in some oil. Just go right ahead, have fun and allow the spices to coat and you'll get the sharp scents of fennel and black pepper wafting through your kitchen. Into that goes about 10 ml of olive oil just to enable everything to stick together. So I'm just going to put 10 ml of olive oil in and give it another tossing before we put it into a tray and bake it. It's that simple and that easy a starry creation. Put it into a baking tray that has been lined with foil and grease so that it doesn't stick and keep a single layer just so that it crisps up and bakes really well. The alternative way is to actually have this deep fried but I'm going the more healthier route out here without anyone knowing. So just line this up in a baking tray and ensure when you cut this you cut it evenly otherwise some will brown and some will roast perfectly. So the trick out here is just ensure that it is cut evenly and you go ahead and line it into your tray. Now I'm using two trays out here because I want them to crisp up and if you are unsure you can go right ahead and use about a tablespoon of rice flour just to aid in the crispiness. So this bakes in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for a good 30 minutes till you get that glorious crunch. 20 minutes of the chicken simmering and it's just about 80% done. You want to give it a quick stir and check whether the tomatoes have softened nicely and into this now we are just going to add in our spices. So about a heap teaspoon of some glorious totally Indian in nature, beautiful garam masala going in. A teaspoon of roasted fennel powder going in. Half a teaspoon of black whole pepper powder going in. Allow all this to mix with each other and even if you see there's too much of water, now for the next 15 minutes you're going to cook it on the slowest possible simmer but an open flame which will help in evaporating everything so don't be alarmed just allow this to mix with each other before we get to adding in our fenugreek i've got a bunch of fenugreek which is about 200 grams i've just picked the leaves rinsed it three to four times and air dried it a bit and that's going in so just allow this entire gorgeous bunch of freshness go right in and toss it gently. Fenugreek builds very fast and now is the time where you want everything to dry up but at the same time obtain the fresh herby flavor that fenugreek brings to this dish. So go gentle and toss it all in. For me at times multitasking is extremely important to put out a lavish fare where you get done in about 30 minutes flat and you have all the time to relax and enjoy. With the lotus root roasting in the oven, the thin slivers just coming together perfectly and my fenugreek leaves nicely wilted out here. I'm just going to let this sit and simmer for a good 20 minutes till the gravy comes together. Rich, laden, bursting with fenugreek flavor yet at the same time healthy to be enjoyed either with a paratha or some rice on the side. 20 minutes of simmering and the moment you start seeing this beautiful olive oil simmering on top, it's time to give this a final garnish of some dehydrated fenugreek leaves just to give it that burst of fenugreeky goodness coming into this entire creation. 
So sprinkle about two to three grams on top and it's time to switch off the flame. Such a simple dish ready in about 40 minutes flat and ready to be enjoyed for lunch or dinner. The lotus root crisping up really well and it's got that beautiful burst of spice. So we're just going to put all this into a bowl and this is best had at room temperature. You can always store it in an airtight container to enjoy as a snack or something to munch on. Just put this in a bowl and this pairs gorgeously well with the methi murg or fenugreek chicken. You can choose to garnish the lotus root or just enjoy it plain but I want slight burst of freshness and green coming through. So I'm just going to add some finely chopped leaves of coriander just to give you that little hidden speck of goodness coming here and there. I hope you enjoyed creating this simple yet stylishly decadent meal. Methi murg or fenugreek chicken pairs gorgeously along with the crunch that lotus root brings to the entire creation. This can be had either with some parathas, some rotis or just simple steamed rice to ride you through this Diwali season. Don't forget to share loads of love by hitting on the like button. And as I always say, don't forget to subscribe.